everybody, you're watching a physio named Jonah. That's this guy. Chris Godwin suffered a hamstring injury in this past Sunday night's game against the Dallas Cowboys. Now, as a Cowboys fan, this was a particularly painful game, but if you want to see more of that pain, go check out my video on Dak Prescott's thumb injury. This video is going to be focused on Chris Godwin's hamstring injury. I'm going to be talking about the injury itself, how it's related to his previous hamstring injuries, as well as how his ACL tear from last year factors in. This is a particularly interesting situation when we talk about a hamstring strain, so let's set the stage here. Chris Godwin missed the final two games of the 2019 season with a hamstring issue. He then missed three games in 2020, split between issues with his hamstring as well as a concussion. Hmm. So, a couple hamstring injuries in the past. Then, on December 19th, 2021, Chris Godwin tore his ACL after a low hit from a Saints defender that required surgery. The ACL surgery took place quickly, seemed to go well, and then the off-season rehab began, as did the speculation about when Godwin would return to the field. There was some pretty intense back and forth about when he would be available to go, but turns out he was ready to get started in week one. I touched on this in my week one recap video that I did before this past Sunday's game, but the reason there was speculation was because Sunday's game in September was right around that nine month timeline that we talk about for ACL tears. This means that technically players are ready to go and this is the assumed timeline for recovery, but everybody's a little bit different. Chris Godwin played this past Sunday in week one of the 2022 NFL season. During that game, he appeared to strain his hamstring as he was reaching down to catch a low pass behind him from Tom Brady moving towards the sideline. After that injury, Godwin did not return to the game and it's thought that he's going to miss at least the next few weeks with a hamstring strain. Okay, so that's a bit about the background, but how does the ACL tear from last year have anything to do with a hamstring strain this year? ACL stands for anterior cruciate ligament, and it's a ligament deep into the center of the knee. Its primary job is keeping the shin bone or tibia from moving forwards in relation to the thigh bone or femur. If it gets torn, the stability of the knee is significantly affected, to the point where professional athletes require surgery to replace the ligament in order to get back out there. I mean, we can't just have shin bones flying around willy-nilly here, can we? Here's the reason I bring this up. How do surgeons replace a torn ACL? Well, they have to take tissue that's like a ligament from somewhere else in the body, anchor it into the center of the knee as a replacement ligament. This tissue is often taken from the quadriceps muscle tendon or the hamstrings muscle tendon. They do this because the tendon is similar in its properties to the ligament and the body won't reject it because it's already from within the body itself. Now it's important to note here that I don't know whether Godwin's graft was taken from his quad or his hamstring, I'm not entirely sure. Either way it will impact the strength around his knee, but if it was taken from the hamstring, this would impact the integrity of his hamstring tendon and the function of his hamstring. Here's another factor that can impact the hamstrings after an ACL tear. The hamstrings are one of the first muscle groups that compensate when an ACL is torn. This is thought to be because of their location at the back of the leg. The distal connections or connection at the end of the hamstring are right below the knee, right at the top of the shin. This means that if the hamstrings contract, they're also going to keep that shin bone or tibia from moving forwards in relation to the femur. So when we tear our ACL, one of the body's ways of compensating is just tightening up those hamstrings like crazy to protect the joint from moving forward. Once the graft is replaced, this body response should be neutralized, but it's worth noting that the hamstring is one of the most protective muscles for the knee, especially when an ACL is involved. What I'm trying to show here is that because of Godwin's previous ACL surgery, it could have made him more likely to injure his hamstring here in week one. This is not because his hamstrings are significantly weaker than the other side, he's been training all off season, but any potential weakness that exists is going to be amplified when we consider what these athletes have to do with their bodies on a weekly basis. Now, do I think it was a mistake necessarily to put him out there? I mean, I have hindsight, I could just say, yeah, he was injured, that was a mistake. But that's not really fair. The Buccaneers training and medical staff is full of a lot of excellent professionals who are really good at what they do in order to be in the position they are to work with these athletes. So if he was back out there, Obviously they thought that he was ready to go. 
What I will say this injury showed is the risk that's present when we're trying to get an athlete back up to game speed. Any possible weakness could be tested at any moment in the NFL like it was when Chris Godwin had to lean back and reach down in order to try and catch a low pass. The question now then is should we be worried about this moving forward? I mean, kinda, yeah, we should. Godwin has a history of hamstring issues that have kept him off the field. Couple that with his ACL surgery last year and the inherent challenges that come with that, and I do worry that this could be something that lingers on for Godwin more than we want it to. I always want to give the optimistic view and believe in the athlete and that they're gonna be ready to go quicker than we expect, but given the history that's there, given what we saw week one, I am a bit worried about Godwin's availability moving forward, or if he does come back, the possibility of re-aggravating that hamstring injury further in the season. Again, could be nothing, just a little hamstring strain from reaching down, but seeing what we did, it did put off a bunch of little physio flags in my mind, so I wanted to chat with you guys about it, share it, give you all some context on an injury like this, and how surgeries, different injuries, a history of injuries, can affect recovery time. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and now understand a little more about Godwin's hamstring injury, ACL tears in general, as well as the role of the hamstring in protecting for the ACL. I really do hope that this gives some context to injuries. Learning about the physical side of what these NFL athletes go through is very interesting, at least to me, because it's what I do for work. So here I am sharing it with you. If you did enjoy it or learn something, consider hitting that thumbs up button down below or subscribing to the channel. Either way helps my channel reach more interested viewers like yourself and that support is very much appreciated. Subscribing will also give you notifications when I release more videos like this later in the season as likely there will be more injuries in the NFL, there always is, and I would like to talk about them more as the season goes on. Leave me a question down in the comments section below if this video sparked any questions for you. I do my best to get back quickly and should be in touch with you within a day or two. You can also let me know there if there are other injuries that you have questions about, that you'd like to see a video about, anything in the physio related world. I look forward to chatting with you soon. But most importantly though guys, as always, move your body, have a laugh today, and I will see you at the next video.